Okay. Hello, everybody. All right. Moving right along here. This is part two of the 4CX250 amplifier build. Today, I'm going to talk about the power supplies, the voltages you're going to need to power the tube up. You're going to need filament voltage, uh, depending on if you're going to use the 150D or Delta, you're going to need a 24 volt filament, not a 6 volt. And if you're going to use the 4CX250 FG, that tube requires 24 volts. And I just recently found my sheet on the 350s. There is a 4CX 350F or Foxtrot. That tube requires 24 volts. Uh, the other bias or the other voltages you're going to need are bias. That's a negative voltage for the grid. You're going to need screen voltage about 350 volts at about uh, probably 5 to 10 milliamps for the screen voltage and we'll get into this later but this voltage here is also what we control the output of the tube with. The plate voltage I'll discuss that'll be one complete video because there's so many variables there um, I'll try to talk about all the options that there are. Uh, the first one at hand the best option that I can see so far unless some of you have a very well stocked junk box a follower suggested a company by the name of Antec and by looking over their site I can see two good possible combinations of transformers that would supply filament bias screen and high voltage all which is two transformers um, and that kind of depends on what and how many tubes you're going to use. One tube, there's two as a, a pair of transformers that'll work for just the one, and that's an AS One Tango 275 and an AS Four Tango 475. That'll provide all the voltages: screen voltage, filament, bias and high voltage for one tube. Uh, because of the power uh, handling of the 1T transformer, that's only, uh, I think it's a 200 mils, 208 mils, 180 mils, I guess it is. Uh, so it would handle one tube. If you're going to use, uh, if you're going to look to the future to maybe you want to go ahead and build a two tube or a three tube version, then you're going to need to go up with to a bigger transformer and that pair or combination would be an AS3 Tango 275 and an AS4 Tango 475 those two will provide uh, the current what I have here is the the three Tango will give 500 milliamps and I believe the four, uh, the four Tango does 420 mils. Uh, full output, two tubes are going to draw 500 milliamps. So the bigger transformer would be just barely over tax. And I think they said you could go 20%. Most iron core transformers can go double. So I know it wouldn't be a problem. Um, it, sideband it would be no problem. But if you're going to go full bore AM, um, we might need to discuss a bigger transformer there. But that's a good combination. I think the little transformer is um, $50, 50-something. 50 and the big one is $65. Not too bad. Anyhow, go to the Antec site look those numbers up. I'll try to come up with a blow up later. Uh, both transformers are toroid type. If you go in and look at the AS1 Tango 275 down where it tells the specs and the outputs of the windings 
you'll see a little PDF that you can download. And as far as I can see, all those transformers are the same. They have two filament windings, in other words, two 6.3 volt. They have a pair of the higher voltage, which now that would be two 275 volt windings. All of the transformers, like I say, have a pair of each. So you've got four windings or four outputs uh, that you can work with. Um, the filaments can be seriesed and paralleled uh, to give more current for uh, more the filament voltage. And we can, we'll get into that, at, like I said, at a later date um, once we get to that. Um, okay, bias. We'll start there. You need about 55 volts. The original transformer on the demo unit that I had built, it was a tube tester, looked like this. It was 35 volts and it was a, uh, a triad. You can look this one up. It was a triad F54X. Phone. <laughs> okay, it's an F54X made by Triad. Uh, it was a 35 volt transformer. It worked out perfectly for everything that I needed. The 35 volt winding, and I'm sorry I didn't get this blown up where you could see this too good. Maybe I can zoom in here. That might be enough to be able to see that. Uh, the 35 volt. The one winding of the, the one end of it was just simply hooked to a diode in reverse that gave us negative output one filter cap this is called a half wave by the way half wave rectifier and that gave 50 volts the other end of that 35 volt the other winding was just hooked to ground just simply hooked to ground the center tap the voltage I haven't talked about yet that voltage is rectified to the positive and that gives us 25 volts to operate our relays or your key in voltages. So that one transformer supplies you with two voltages, bias and key in voltage. The math for the 35 volt, let me find my sheet here, it's blown up. Okay, the math, ignore the the 550 just take the voltage you have like 35 volts in this case 35 times 1.414 if you can see that it's 49.4 volts and that's how you, uh, you you come out with that. This reading here is for the, the screen transformer, but you use the 1.414 uh, on any AC voltage to find out what your DC voltage is after it's rectified. Have any questions on that? Let me know. Um, we'll get to this sheet here in just a second. Um, the Antec transformers, like I say, have enough windings that uh, we hook two of them, two of the 6-volt windings in series, and get 12 on one transformer. And then uh, the other transformer, we use one of its 6-volt windings and add that to the 12 to put us up at about 18 volts. And then that voltage would then be doubled and that would come out with enough bias. So there's there's lots of ways, you have lots of variables. Uh, if you had a 6 volt transformer and a 12 volt, you could series them up and come up with all, you know, like I said, there's lots of combinations. Um, I've made a couple videos uh, about a year or so ago. You can go check those out. And those are working with transformers or power supplies, I think is the title. And there I explain how you can series different windings and come up with the various voltages that you need. Okay. 
screen screen voltage. Now we get to this one. The transformer that I used was out of a um, an old uh, VHF antenna line amplifier that they call used to use. They called it a distribution amp, and it had some several small tubes. But the voltage was just right. It had 275 volts. Either let me get this up. I forgot I got blown up there. It had 275 volts either side of center tap. You ground the center tap, put a diode in each of the outside legs, and this is what you get. 550 volts all the way across. 1.414. Again, we come out with 777 volts. Or, yeah, the, divided by two that's going to be our our screen voltage maybe I didn't make that clear there but this is um, you ground the center tap we got 275 we come up with 388 on the output but on our uh, the Antec transformers, you would actually use this center tap in a full wave bridge, not just the two diode. This is a half wave, but it's in a full wave configuration because we have two windings or two two wires we can use because it's a split transformer. If this were a bridge, you'd have two more diodes, and then you could use that center. And it would give you again you would get 388 off of that if this was a full wave bridge i'll get into that more about when i start talking about those transformers it might be confusing to jump that far ahead right now but i thought i'd at least give that note out there that this is the voltage we need 275 volts or if you just simply have a 275 volt transformer uh, maybe you don't, you don't have a center tap. Maybe it's only from one end to the other is only 275. That's fine. You would use a full wave bridge, but you're going to need to come out to this voltage, 388 volts. And that'll be our screen voltage. Okay. Um, Again, this is the complete schematic of the unit. Let me zoom out again here. Oop, wrong way. Oop. All right. Okay, that's the complete schematic of the whole unit. Showing the three transformers that I used. And again, on the high voltage, um, that it's going to take quite a bit to explain that because um, there's so many variables. Uh, I'll just make one straight video on just the high voltage into this. In the meantime, I have found my uh, data sheets for the iMac tubes. Uh, the 4X150 and there's a variant of this called the 4X150D and that's a 24 volt filament. These are downloadable. You're going to need these to find your voltages and stuff that you need uh, on each of them. Uh, just go Google and then uh, 4X150 data sheet. And if you want the D data sheet, ask for the 4X150D data sheet. And same on the rest of them. Um, we've got the 4CX250B. That's going to be the most common one. The 4CX250FG, again, is uh, it uses the 26 volt filament. It all depends on what you can find to use. It doesn't matter. They're all pretty much the same the way they tune and load. And the 4CX350 Alpha, 
that's a 6 volt tube Whoop. and the 4CX350F is a 26 volt filament tube and again all of these are downloadable uh, what they show is they the requirements for uh, uh, your plate voltage, screen voltage, bias, uh, the drive watts, and they show the impedance of the tubes for load for resonant load impedance. It might be handy to get those ahead of time for whatever tube that you're just going to decide to use. That way, if you have a question, you can usually go to that and figure out. Uh, whatever requirements the tube needs. Okay, um, I think that was about it. So if you have any questions, send me an email. If you want all the schematic sets, they're free. Just ask for the 4CX250B schematic set. 4CX250B schematic sets. And uh, everything that I have uh, drawn up, I'll uh, send you out. And there's about seven, I think there's seven or eight of them. They're all in JPEG format, and you can print them out. Okay, um, the next one we'll get a little farther into the screen uh, voltage and coming up with the voltage and how I figure out my dividers for the screen voltage. So that'll be on the next video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and uh, leave a comment. Let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just feel free to ask. There are no stupid questions. Uh, this is kind of a complicated tube. I might be rushing too fast through this, but uh, I'll do what I can to provide information enough to where we can end up building one of these. But uh, there's a lot of preliminary lim uh, information that you're going to need first so that you can decide what power transformers and what parts you're going to need to grab and get on hand. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.